Welcome to Community Cafe, where strangers become new friends. New friends become old friends, and old friends become family. Please join our table or take a seat at the counter. We're glad you came. Hi, you're listening to Society Bites Radio, and I'm your host, Kate O'Neill. Today, we have some interesting story to talk about. Dr. Miranda Ikuvo, forensic therapist of the city, just helped put a serial killer behind bars. But she soon discovers that her investigation into seven unusual murders is not yet complete, A near-death experience throws her out of time and into a realm of labyrinths and spirits. There, she encounters the brothers Chance and the Trickster, who have otherworldly interest in their seemingly mundane crimes from her files. In this standalone fantasy novel by an award-winning author, the dark truth behind a string of unusual murders leads to an otherworldly exploration of spirits, myth, and memory steeped in Caribbean storytelling. Karen Lorne is a Barbadian writer of speculative fiction. Her first novel, Redemption in Indigo, released in 2010, retells the story of Ansige Karamba the Gluten from Singali's Folklore and her second novel, The Best of All Possible Worlds, released in 2013 is an example of social science fiction. Lord also writes on the sociology of religion. Please welcome to the show, author Karen Lord. Karen, welcome to the Thanks show. Thanks so much for inviting me. Thank you so much for inviting me. Ah, my pleasure. A lot of these words are kind of hard to pronounce, but uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope I got through it and, and did justice to you. You have um, uh, quite an an interesting story, but before mm-hmm. we get into the book, let's tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and how you came to mm-hmm. be where you are today. Okay. Well, um, what do you need to know? Besides, we've, we've mentioned my first book, that was in 2010, and that was my, um, I, I didn't, that was my first publication in fiction, actually. Mm-hmm. And that is connected to the present book. So I do think of them as, as being almost um, like part of the thread of my career as a writer, which mm-hmm. is interesting, um, because the first book was in a way somewhat inspired by um, a theology class I happened to be taking. And the um, unraveling is a sort of a further exploration on what redemption really is, what it can mean for different types of beings in a way um mm-hmm. in the sense of what if your 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 exp- experience of time is not the linear um sort of forward arrow of time that's a human experience what does that mean in terms of your sort of um question of, of justice you know sort of action and consequence so um so these these are all things i was i was looking at you, you mentioned uh, in my bio that sociology religion is something that i have studied as well so it was all it was all kind of um, tied up in this thought experiment. Where were you brought up? Oh, in Barbados. In Barbados. Mm-hmm. How long have you been in the United States? I have never been in the United States. I'm not there now, and I oh, never studied goodness. there. And I I pass through and visit occasionally when there's a convention or a festival, but I I don't really know the states very much at all. Wow. I was hoping that you were going to be at the book fair this year. Hi, I'm going to be at the book fair. Oh, That's good. That's one of my pass-throughs. Good. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what the book fair means, it's the Miami International Book Fair. It's held every year at Miami-Dade College, and they have about 600 of the top-notch best authors, new authors that you can meet and learn more about their writing. So we're very thrilled that you're going to be there. Um how do you, what do you draw from to develop your characters 
and put them in the situations they're in? Well, when you're having writer's block, that's definitely a question you ask yourself. Okay. Um, but in general, in general, when the when the writing is going smoothly, um, it sometimes it can honestly be pure imagination. You can you can have a little episode where it almost seems as if a character just pops into your head, fully formed, speaking their particular way, having their particular mannerisms, and having certain. Um, traits which almost encourage them to go down certain plot lines. Um, other times it's not as straightforward as that. Perhaps it might be a combination of people you remembered from your past, people you know now. Um, again, if someone has an unusual or interesting trait that you think, oh, I'd like to explore that. Um, and even, of course, in folklore, because that's what happened in the first book. Um, the redemption in Indigo is based on, on that Senegalese folktale um, with Ansiga Karamba the Glutton. And the first, mm -hmm. not the first, but the second, third and fourth chapters are really just that folktale retold and expanded. But the, the, the thing that had me for that book was, what would it be like if a woman with a character like Tama had further adventures? What would that look like? And that was what I was exploring. And then for Unraveling, it was, again what would it be like if, and now I'm sort of riffing off my previous characters, this particular character that I introduced in Redemption still has to deal with certain things. What's that going to look like? How do I expand on that? What kind of characters do I need to put beside my protagonist to, to illuminate what they're going through? Um, so it, it becomes, it, it becomes world building really. It's almost like you're building a society, a group of people to interact with people. Um, it becomes it becomes extremely fascinating. So where does this particular book, Unraveling, fit in the series mm -hmm. of the books that you've written? Well, it's really connected to the first book only. I like okay. to say to people that have written two fantasies and two science fiction novels, but the boundaries are a bit blurry in sense of genre. But definitely the first and the fourth are connected. That's Redemption, Indigo, and Unraveling. And the second and the third are connected, and that best of all possible world leads into the galaxy game. Now, you have two very interesting characters in here, Chance and the Trickster, who are brothers. Mm -hmm. Are they in any are they in the first book as well? They are in the first book as well, yes. <laughs> Um, they are in the first book as well. They may look a little different. They may seem a little different probably because the first book is very much told in the kind of a, a storyteller voice. And this one, you actually get to be more in, inside their heads and in, in, in more of a traditional kind of close third person kind of way. Um, and <laughs> I'll just explain it. Um, I say the books are connected, but, but they're also um, quite different and in, in even in genre, there's a little bit of horror, a little bit of crime unraveling. Mm -hmm. um, redemption is more pure fantasy. And redemption, I'd give to a child to read, and unraveling, I wouldn't. <laughs> so, um, so, yes. But, yes, those, those two characters are in both, um, but present in slightly different ways. Tell us about Kabir. Why do you want to know about Kabir? <laughs> Because he's a little different. He's not like, you know, if, as I like to refer to it, one of these things is not like the other. Mm -hmm. So tell us how you um, came up with his character. Well, Kabir is, well, the reason I, I asked you why is because he's actually, for me, one of the more ordinary characters. In a way, he portrays a person who has a very normal life, with very ordinary happenings, and it's just about, you know, doing his work and getting through the day. And then when strange things start to happen around him, he's sort of like, yeah, I'm not really here to deal with this. <laughs> so um, so I do think of him as being more um, to the edge of the story, but in a very supportive kind of way to the co-protagonist, Miranda, uh -huh. um, because he, he, takes the, he takes the role of the family she doesn't have nearby um, and helps her um, through some various things. So he plays a very strong supporting 
role here. The reason why I said that it was, you know, one of these things that's not like the others is because he is different. He is normal compared to everybody else in the book. <laughs> so. uh, that's a good point. There's so much not normal happening in, in the story. You're quite right. He's the one who's sort of like, hmm, I'm, he got, I'm not part of this. <laughs> no, he's, he's a little more grounded than everybody else is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have a, a, a series of forensic leads that go into the murders. Mm -hmm. Had you mm -hmm. done research before about uh, forensic science and criminology? I have not done research specifically on that because um, the, the real forensic stuff, um, Moran has already done it. Um, you know, it's all in the files and so on. What actually happens in the book is a kind of a weird um, sort of spiritual forensic um, examination of her memory and the connections between the people she has interviewed and seen. So um, it, it, it doesn't even really require what I would call a real world um, knowledge of actual forensic techniques. It is literally taking her out of her comfort zone. So it's kind of... Um... Not really a nightmare, but definitely an otherworldly mindset. Absolutely, yeah. Who was your favorite character? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, they kind of cycle. They're all, all these, like, near favorites. I think sometimes I, I like Patience quite a lot. Um, she's very briefly around for redemption in the girl. You see a lot more of her here. And um, she's a fascinating character to me because she's, she is, has enough power to be almost a goddess. But she plays by her own rules. Most and goddesses do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably why they are. Um, <laughs> she plays by her own rules. And, and she also has this interesting way. I mean, I guess, I guess there's this one bit that I'm, I'm kind of really happy with that I had her say and she was like um you know these these um these things are from me they're they're kind of my creation they're kind of part of me but I insist on giving them free will and even if that means they disobey me or do things to disappoint me so be it um, oh wow I heard that <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry to yes <laughs> uh, honey you can't you can't stop what God does <laughs> yep <laughs> and for our listeners out um, there Karen, unfortunately, is experiencing a very loud thunderstorm where she's at, so exactly. bear with us. <laughs> so our fingers are crossed that I will not get cut off, <laughs> and um, I'm just watching my universal, um, my uninterrupted power supply and hoping that it will do the work for me. But anyway, let's keep going and hope that, that we'll have the time that we need. Yes, so, so yeah, Patience is one of my favorites. Um, I do also like the trickster and chant even separately, but specifically the way they are together. Um, there's something about their, their bond that, have, that makes me feel very affectionate towards them. So when you decided to interact with these characters, which one do you think you could have done differently or better? Who was your Ooh. biggest challenge? <laughs> I almost don't want to admit that. Um, well, I can tell you where one of the main challenges was, but I'm afraid I will spoil a part of the book. Oh, Let's we just don't say that there was a point. <laughs> we don't want. We don't want to do this. <laughs> no spoiler. I'll, I'll be cryptic. I'll be cryptic. I'll be cryptic. Okay. I won't say who, and I won't say quite what. But let's just say that there's a point in the book where. What you're seeing is not really a person, but a portrayal of a person by another person. Okay. And to me, that was a, a real balancing act because um, you, you kind of have, um, it's an illusion. It's basically an illusion, but it's still an illusion that is trying very hard to come to the truth. So there's a way in which you have to portray both a sense of alienation but also familiarity. And that, to me, was a very delicate balancing act. 